Hello grade 8 learners! Welcome to our quarter 2 week 6 of our lesson. How are you today? Hope you're doing fine. It's another day to have some fun and learn at the same time. Brace yourself as we dig into the world of math. Today's lesson is all about conditional statements. An if-then statement, also known as the conditional statement, is composed of two clauses, the if clause and the then clause. We can denote a letter for each clause, P for the if clause and Q for the then clause. The statement is in the form if P then Q. The P statement is called the hypothesis and the Q statement is the conclusion. If then statement symbol we have P R O Q and it is read as if P then Q or P implies Q. If this happens then that will happen. The if word is followed by our hypothesis, which is our P, and the then word is followed by our conclusion, which is our Q. Now, let's take a look at this. We have here P, two distinct planes intersect, and we have Q, the intersection is a line. If we write it in if-then form, the statement would be, if two distinct planes intersect, then their intersection is a line. The if is followed by our P and the then word is followed by our Q. Now we will have some examples. Let us identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. So in number one, if I study hard, then I will graduate. What would be our hypothesis and what would be our conclusion? Our hypothesis is if I study hard and our conclusion is I will graduate. How about our example number two? I'll bring an umbrella if it rains tomorrow. The hypothesis is if it rains tomorrow. And our conclusion is I'll bring an umbrella. Example number three. If a polygon has six sides, then it is a hexagon. What is the hypothesis? The hypothesis is a polygon has six sides and the conclusion is it is a hexagon. Number four, if a number is even, then it is divisible by two. A number is even is our hypothesis and it is divisible by two is our conclusion. We have already learned how to identify the hypothesis and the conclusion. Now, let us write the following statements in if-then form. Number one, cheese contains calcium. In if-then form, if it is a cheese, then it contains calcium. Number two, a segment has exactly one midpoint. If we write this in if-then form, it would be If a segment, if it is a segment, then it has exactly one midpoint. Example number three, angles in a linear pair are supplementary. What would be the if-then form of this statement? The if-then form of this statement is if the angle is a linear pair, then it is supplementary. Take note, 
Conditional statements might not always be written in the if-then form. Let's have an example. I'll wash the car if the weather is nice. What would be our hypothesis in this statement? Our hypothesis is the weather is nice. And our conclusion? I'll wash the car. Example number two. I'll be a millionaire when I win the lottery. The hypothesis is, I win the lottery. And the I will be a millionaire is our conclusion. Conditionals. Is it true or false? Conditionals can be either true or false. A conditional is true if it can be verified by the following Fact, definition, property, postulate, and theorem A false conditional occurs when the hypothesis is true and the conclusion is false here are some examples. Number one, if there are three non-collinear points, then four lines are formed. The hypothesis is true, but our conclusion is false. Number two, if the sum of the angles of a polygon is 180 degrees, then it is a square. Why is it that our statement is false? Because if the sum of the angles of a polygon is 180, then it must be a triangle. And that's all for this session. I hope you have learned something new. Thank you for watching. See you next time!